To be the best, you got to beat the best. There's a, not a such thing as second. The only person that's taking second is the person that's competing against you. I feel like when I was with a certain promoter, I was in a chokehold. I couldn't say the things that I wanted to say. I couldn't be the person that I wanted to be. What's the most expensive single item you've ever bought? My Beverly Hills home. Actually, no. My biggest check is writing it to the IRS. Wow. We've only gone and got the greatest boxer of all time. Try and deny it. The one, the only, Floyd Money Mayweather live now. Made over a billion in boxing. Reveals all, nothing is left off the table. Punches me back a few times, you're gonna love this. But first, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications. Let's get in there, pound for pound, with Floyd Mayweather. Floyd, thank you very much for doing the show. Thanks for having me. Sorry to um, get you up this morning. <laughs> it's okay, it's not, it's early, it's, 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 it's not early, it's late, a little late. <laughs> got, got up late today. I have a feeling like you're quite misunderstood. So I'd like, I wanted to ask you, what's Floyd Mayweather really like? I'm just um, outspoken. Um, a family, a family person loves a person who loves his family. Um, passionate and dedicated to whatever I get involved in. Um, very hard worker. Um, willing to willing to learn. Um, um, a person who has a lot of integrity, um, the will to win in life, um, very respectful. And I just believe in uh, you treat me like I treat you, reciprocation. Um, that's who I am. And you said outspoken, Floyd. And is that because you've always been that way or is because that you because you learned how to promote a fight and be your own sort of champion to you know, get your name out to the masses. My thing is, this is who I am, you know, and um, if I feel like it's something that should be heard to the world, why not? And when I'm entertaining, um, it's fun, you know, um, me and my opponent both, you know, even though my opponent cannot beat me at trash talking, in, uh, <laughs> you know, even like with me and, uh, me and Ricky Hatton, um, me and Conor McGregor, and a lot of other opponents, you know, we trash talk. And no matter if the arena is filled up with their fans, I'm still going to come out on top. That's just who I am. <laughs> and that trash talk, do, do you really mean some of the things that are said there? Or is that for you all just part of the game? I mean, of course, I mean, I mean, it. I mean, as far as what I'm going to do to my opponent, um, it's obvious. I mean, if, if I told him I was going to beat him and I was going to uh, humiliate him uh, every time I went out there, I did that. But some fights, um, I probably wanted to win in better form and fashion. I, I may have it, but, you know, um, sometimes we have good nights, sometimes we have bad nights, but we always, we always have good paydays. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the outspoken nature that you said you have, yes, um, that obviously attracts a lot of critics, a lot of haters. Um, does that bother you? Does that ever get to you? My focus is always myself, not saying I don't appreciate my fans or appreciate people, but it's about self-preservation. I must love myself first and I must go out and do what's best for Floyd Mayweather first. Um, um, people are, are going to always judge you. Uh, no matter if you're doing good, if you're doing bad, you're going to always be judged. So it's best that you be judged in doing what you want to do because you can't please everybody. You cannot please everybody. So if you can't please everybody, try to entertain uh, everybody if it's possible. So you definitely see yourself not just as a fighter, but as an entertainer. Is that an important part of it? Well, you don't get to this level and 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 make these type of paydays you're not entertaining you have to be somewhat entertaining because people like to be entertained and you as far as me i'm going to go out there and be the best that i can be at whatever i get involved in whether it's boxing or it's doing something on the outside of that square circle has there ever though been a time where something someone has said or has done has really cut through your i guess you must have like a thick skin to it but has ever anything got through and really hurt? 
Let me. I, I got to think about that for a while. I don't want to rush when I answer that. Um, no, not at all. A lot. Of, I'm sorry. That's all right. Okay. That was somebody else's phone. I apologize. <laughs> um, not really because I have thick skin and I know who I am as a person. I know what I'm capable of doing. And this has nothing to do with just boxing as a person. Um, we live, we learn, and you take the good with the good, you take the bad with the bad. And as a the individual that I am, I just keep striving and hoping for the best at any situation I'm put in. Sometimes I, I can take what somebody said, say that's negative and say, you know what, uh, I can turn it into something positive. And is that like by using it as motivation and fuel? Do you ever yeah. use? Everything is always motivation and fuel uh, to push me to be the best that I can be just as a person, period. So let's talk a bit more about your boxing specifically then, Floyd, because dad was a boxer, uncles yes. were boxers. So did you become a boxer because you wanted to become a boxer? or because your family wanted you to become a boxer? Well, a little bit of both. Um, my dad was a fighter. It all started with my dad. Then his brothers were fighters. I was just always around the craft, always around boxing, always around the sport. Then eventually, um, you know, uh, I, I got involved. Well, I was always involved ever since I was, since I was born because I was born into a, a fighting family. Uh, just took it to that next level always had goals, always had dreams, and just took things to that next level. And I just felt that I couldn't be stopped and um, kept working hard and pushing myself. And did you ever feel you had anything to prove to your, your dad or your uncles, your family? Oh, absolutely. I wanted to prove that I was the best, um, that I was the best ever put on a pair of gloves. And, and if you go look, you can see. Um, you go, and go back in the history of boxing, and just, you know, just check out the stats, check out the different fighters, not knocking any fighters because I take my hat off to all fighters that paved the way for me to be where I'm at. And I take my hat off to all the young fighters right now that's trying to be the next Floyd Mayweather. Um, I was just dedicated to my craft and push, and kept pushing myself, kept believing and kept working extremely hard. And do you think your um, family were... Um like really happy for you that you became the best or did any of them wish they were the best? Or? Uh, hopefully they feel that they were the best, but you know, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, a lot of fighters can say they're the best, but when it, when it really comes down to it and you look, you know, it's Floyd Mayweather at the top, hands down. And I know, I believe you employ quite a lot of your family and they're in your sort of, I know you've got a lot of business interests, which we'll talk about. How is it working with your family? I love working with my family. There's nothing like family. Um, as far as um, different businesses, you know, certain businesses is not for the family. Um, but you, got, I got certain places where the family could work and be a part of my team, uh, especially with, in boxing, because my family got me started. Um, <clears throat> Business-wise, when I was in boxing, uh, there was nothing like, you know, me and Al Hammond joining for forces, working together as a team. Um, Leonard Ellaby also works with our team. So, um Everybody is family because I feel like family are the people that are around you every day. And I feel like your bloodline is your relatives. But um, uh, I got family that works with me every day and I got my relatives that works with, work with me every day on a daily basis. And the team around you, how important has that been in, you know, in your success? Um, very important. I mean, because they, you know, they play a major part. A lot of times you may... I may go out there and accomplish certain things or even like this interview, somebody from my team, you know, uh, somebody from the money team uh, set this up. So my team works with me heavy. Uh, my team believes in me. I believe in my team. And that's what it's about. Believe in the people that surround you. And I believe in the people that are, are around me. And do your team feel comfortable to challenge you sometimes and oh, absolutely. call you out? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, uh, nobody knows it all. Even, you know, I don't know it all. That's why you, the people that you put on your team, they have to be strong in certain depart departments. So I got people that are strong in certain certain departments. They help me out on a daily basis and work with me every day. Great. So was there a time, Floyd, when yes. you thought, 
I'm going to be the best boxer in the world. Was there a moment? Was it was it from you when you were a kid, or was there a moment you thought I'm going to be the best, the very best of all time? <laughs> Hi, it's Rob. Quick interruption here to make sure you like this video and you subscribe to the channel. We are upping our content game, bringing you the most disruptive interviewees and guests and content, and not just the people who do the usual circuit. So make sure you like, subscribe, and now let's get back to the interview. I always wanted to be the best from day one. Um, ever since I've known about being the best, I wanted to be the best. You know, my dad always talk, taught me about winning. Winning, winning, winning. Um, there's a, not a such thing as second. Only person that's taking second is the person that's competing against you at whatever you do. So I always wanted to just win and work hard. And I like, but what I tell my children is winning is not always having your hand raised. Winning is giving a hundred percent and not just when you're under the lights. Winning is giving a hundred percent in training as well as when it's time to perform under the big lights. Was there a moment in your career where, where maybe you won a fight or something, you, you know, you just figured out? where it all became very real? Um, uh, what, you, what, you, what do you mean by all so real? Well, I mean, you can, you can always believe you're the best, but you could still maybe not even be a, a national champion, yet, let alone a world champion. But well, it, was there a fight or a moment where you're like, I know I'm the best, but here's the proof? Well, I knew I was the best from the beginning. If you could <laughs> Go back and look at the beginning of my career. I called every champion out when I was just a teenager because I was I was a professional ever since I've been a teenager. So, I mean, to be the best, you got to beat the best. So, I wanted to beat every fighter that was the best. That was at my weight class or even around my weight class. I had to have patience. I had patience. Eventually, all the big fights came. I accomplished and did what I had to do. So, Floyd, let's talk a bit more about your business interests, because I know you've got a lot of business interests. Yeah. I'm an entrepreneur and a businessman, so this is probably going to be my favorite part. So yeah. do you need to be smart in business to be a world champion boxer? Well, well, that's a little bit. I can't really understand that question because every fighter that's a world champion in boxer doesn't mean he's a smart businessman. So. I mean, um, winning um, a championship belt has nothing to do with it. Becoming a CEO or entrepreneur or someone that has accomplished business on a certain scale. I remember watching an interview with you, Floyd. Yes. And you talked about making smart moves mm -hmm. in boxing and business. So what are smart well, moves? Well, some of the smart moves that I made, just smart investments. Well, just period, even in boxing, one of the smartest business moves that I made, I bet on myself. You know, I bought myself out of my contract for 750,000. And when I did that, uh, I think that was the best thing for my career and, and for my family, as well as my team. And, and why did you buy yourself out of your contract? Because uh, I felt like when I was with a certain promoter, I was in a chokehold. You know, I couldn't say the things that I wanted to say. I couldn't be the person that I wanted to be. I couldn't be outspoken. And then I was able to become my own boss, promote my fights where I wanted to promote my fights, um, do the certain things that I wanted to do. And when I did that, you know, every, it was greater later. Mm. You know, you got to make certain sacrifices to get to a certain point. And that's what I did. Going on Dancing with the Stars, doing stuff like WWE, uh, look, you know, those things right there, just going to different fields, taking chances, getting fans from all walks of life and making them become boxing fans. Even if you didn't become boxing fans, I was entertaining enough for you just to be entertained by me, myself. And was there any points where things like that could potentially distract you away from your training and fighting? Well, absolutely not, because I know that was a key piece to it all. You know, uh, boxing was the, the driving force. So you could never 
overlook the driving force. You can never overlook where everything eventually started from, you know, that's the foundation. So you can never forget the foundation. I think actually was Leonard, Le Leonard Ellaby, um, I believe at the time, and he might still be, he was the CEO of Mayweather Pro Promotions. And I'm going to read the quote. Um, Floyd Mayweather made approximately $1 billion through prize money in boxing. Now he wants to make another billion dollars in a post-fighting career through real estate. So is real estate a big thing for you moving now beyond your boxing career? Very huge. Um, right now, um, I'm involved in commercial real estate. I've been involved in commercial real estate, actually, since I've been fighting. Um, made a lot of smart moves early on. In my, when I, I don't want to really want to say early on in my career. I want to say midway through my career. Um, but I always I learned how to balance money on a small scale. And so uh, I balanced money on a small scale. Then eventually, uh, when I got it on a bigger scale, I took it to the next level. Um, a lot of commercial real estate. Uh, uh, let me see what else I'm looking forward to doing. Uh, I just bought a skating rink, a skating rink, um, strip club. I I've been having my strip club. I didn't just buy my strip club, a gentleman's club. And we looking to franchise our skating rink as well as our, our gentleman's club, even though it may not be, be that big over in the UK, but in the U S we love to have fun. Um, have, you know, uh, women will always be in style. Music will always be in style and good music and food. So that will always be in style. So when those things come together and you guys can, uh, and alcohol is, is going to be, is involved. Of course, you got a, you got a small party. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's a good business in itself because over in the U.S. I don't know about over in any other country, but we talk about in the U.S. because you could be in another country and something else may be big. And um, I'm buying a new, uh, my new hookah lounge is coming, but, um, you know, I got skyscrapers uh, that I'm involved with and that I own in New York City. So um, my portfolio is. is, is <laughs> nice. And how do you manage those multiple business interests? Because that's a lot of things. Uh, you can't just be smart. You've got to be intelligent, too, and, and involve yourself and surround yourself with smart as well as intelligent people. And. You got to surround yourself with team players. And when you get to this level, you can't be worried about who's getting the most. There's enough to go around. You have to be a team player. And, and what's the difference, Floyd, between smart and intelligent? Well, smart is uh, something like, say, I'll give you an example. Like if somebody go to school and you, you, gotta, you have a test to take. So you go home, you read a book, you go over it, then you come back and you remember all the data that you, you, that you stored in your mind. You take the test and then you, and then you say, okay, you pass the test, but then, so you solve all, I mean, basically you take the test and you, you see what your grade is and you remember everything that you store. You may get a B, you may get an A, you may even get a C. But far as intelligence, somebody can give you some and you'll find a way to solve the problem uh, just naturally from your natural abilities. Mm -hmm. And so remember, I always talked about this. There's, there's only three ways you can learn, you know, hearing, seeing, and physically hands on. So I can learn all three different ways. Floyd, social media and, yes. you know, the, the influencer culture, how has that affected um, boxing and promoting boxing? I feel like I was already huge before social media was, was, was huge or big. But it has helped drastically because you can pick up a cell phone and push a button and the world can get to know you know everything about you, know your age, know your height, know everything. Whereas at one particular time before social media, it could be a person that was huge over overseas who played uh, football, which is in the U.S. is soccer, could be huge. And nobody knew who he was. But now it's able to bring different people together from all walks of life. And people can become famous just on social media. So... I mean, it's a plus, I feel. And do you like do you like it? Do you like being in the social media world? Is it something you like as part of the promotion game? Um, as far as work and getting the word out there to people fast, I don't mind. But 
every day just being on social media. I'm not, I'm, I couldn't be on social media because I have so many different businesses and so many things that I'm involved with. So I couldn't be on social media all day. It's only 24 hours in a day. And remember, a lot of times eight hours for the normal person, you're asleep for eight hours and eight hours you're working. So that's uh, 16 hours in itself. So the last eight hours I can't spend on social media. <laughs> so but even like if you go uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner, that's another three hours. <laughs> so I think we're at 19 hours. So over, I think we've only got five hours left. So I can spend five, five hours on social media. Let's move now, Floyd, a bit more to the mindset. Was there ever a time when or the closest time you got to giving up? or you felt at a lowest point in your career? Never wanted to give up. Just felt like I needed a break so I can get to know who Floyd Mayweather is. Not saying I didn't know who I was, but just sometimes we need time just to ourselves. A time away from everybody, a time to really get a chance to really know who we are. You know, meaning that I knew who Floyd was my whole life, but you, you know, you become a teenager, then you get in your twenties, and then when I when I got to thirty, I said, you know what? I've been boxing for thirty years, my whole life. So let's let me just step away and take a break. I'm still going to. I, I, I got plans on coming back, but I need to take a break just for myself. And um, the break helped, and came back, and uh, did things even bigger on on, on the second go around. Was there anything specifically that triggered that, Floyd? Just me. I need a time for myself. I just, sometimes you just need a break. Just take a, a deep breath. Just need a break. Um, you know, you do things where you don't feel like you're on somebody else's schedule. You don't want to feel like you're on nobody else's schedule. Like, I have to do this. Um, you, you, everybody should do things because they want to do it, not because they have to do it. What traits would you say make you the greatest boxer that other boxers you fought didn't have? Um, they're not Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just my mental. I wouldn't settle for less. I don't believe in settling for anything. I feel like you can always get better. You can always grow. In any fight that I fought, it was never good enough, no matter what the people say. I mean, because... And I don't really worry about what the critics say because that's their job is to criticize you. So um, how can you guys criticize me? You guys can't do what I can do. So um, my job is just to, I mean, as far as with fighters, um, I don't drink. Um, I don't smoke. I don't believe in abusing my body. I mean, of course, as far as with eating, I have ch cheat days, but fighters can't get on my level mentally, you know, um, Physically, if a fighter is on the same level, if he got hand speed like me, I mean, he could be stronger than me, could have faster hands than me, faster feet. But mentally, I could just go to another place where nobody else can go. Just in that ring and outside the ring, because I can't speak for no other fighters. But, you know, I don't know what how they have invested, but just I'm still living the same life that I was living when I was inside the ring. And I'm still making, I mean, great money on the out. I mean, on the outside, yes. And that place you go, Floyd, in your mind that others can't go. What is that place? I can go anywhere, you know. Just being able to adapt, being able to adjust, making adjustments. So that's what go that that that's what goes on in real life. Being able to adapt, being able to make adjustments. So you got to bring that into the into the boxing world. And that's what I'm able to do. So you've never lost a fight. But where in life have you had a defeat? What's been the cost of all the time and effort you've put to becoming the best boxer in the world? Losing my uncle Roger was a defeat. Losing my grandmother was a defeat. Losing my housekeeper of 20-something years was a defeat. Losing my children mother was a defeat. Losing my best friend was a defeat. So it's not just, I mean, even certain people you think that y'all had a certain bond, that y'all really had a friendship. If they're no longer in your life, that's a defeat because you thought you guys were really friends. 
So um, you can be, def I mean, I've been defeated in, in ways like that, you know, or, you know, you could have had a bond with a, with a person, you know, a close bond. And you think that y'all have a certain type of relationship and they're no longer in your life. So that's a defeat in itself. So, um, but I feel like everything that you go through in life, is just a learning experience. And um, I just try to become stronger every day. And how, how do you bounce back from those big losses and losing people close to you? Um, communicating with other close people around you that really care, really, really want the best for you. Not just in it, I mean, because of course, not just in it for the money. You know, who, genu who genuinely care? Floyd. Yes. I think round three, round four against Conor McGregor, I think you were down. But, but I, I don't know if you were playing with him and letting him have a few or you were really down. So go on, tell us the truth. When it was over, my hands was raised. That's the truth. And in, in, in a lot of fights, I was down a couple rounds. Doesn't mean nothing. It's not over to it's not over to it's over. I mean, I think when I was fighting a, a few other fights, you know, um, other guys, I was down a couple rounds or however they judged it. It didn't matter. It's always about the, the end results and the end results all 50 times is my hands was raised. So it's not how you start. It's how you finish. <laughs> always finish on top. Yeah. So the doubts, the doubts ever creep in when you're down? Absolutely not. Because remember, I told you, I can make adjustments. I can adapt to any style. That's the special thing about Floyd Mayweather. That's what makes me the best. Because nobody can adapt and make adjustments like, like myself. Why fight Logan Paul? It's, you mean why have an exhibition with Logan Paul? Yeah. Because a fight is, a, a fight is, that, is something that goes on your record forever. This is an exhibition. Uh, why not? I mean, uh, like I just told you before, remember this. I got a sharp mind. I, I told you I was an entertainer. I wasn't just, I'm not just a fighter. I'm an entertainer. So, I mean, uh, why not? Something different, something that I don't mind doing, and something that um, the people want to see. And do you don't think the, the kind of cross-discipline or exhibition fights... They don't have a, an effect on taking boxing seriously or your legacy. Okay, so so if I fight a, a, a normal, uh, a regular fighter right now, as a matter of fact, I just want to ask you this because we talked about social media. Okay, how many box? Name another boxer besides myself that's more famous than Logan Paul. Tyson Fury, maybe. What? So let's look up. So what you need to do right now, I want you to look up Tyson Fury. Look up how many followers he got on social media. And look up how many followers Logan Paul has on social media. You Did you look it up? I want you to look no, it up. No, I'm gonna, all right, I'll look it up. I was going to take your word for it. <laughs> no. All right. Do you, know, do you know... Tyson Fury is only famous in the UK? Yeah, well, that's probably why I said it, Floyd, because I guess he is big over here. Okay. Um, yeah, so Logan Paul, 56 million um, across combined. And then Tyson Fury followers. He did sell quite a few million books here in the UK, I think. Tyson Fury followers. Four million on Instagram. I can't see the total. So, 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 hold on. So, 50 something compared to four something. Yeah, that was Instagram, but it, it doesn't, at, at the end of the day, there's no comparison at all. So, I can fight a fighter right now, right? And I can, I can guarantee myself what? 35 million. I can guarantee myself 35 million. Eventually, probably made probably 50 million, right? Just a regular fighter, right? Or I could, me and Logan Paul or a YouTuber 
we can go out and entertain and have fun and make nine figures, a hundred million or, or more. So if you were me and you were retired, because everybody thinks that retire mean at home with your feet kicked up and you picking up weight and you growing and, and your hair getting gray. I prefer to go out and still entertain and have fun. Just because I go out and entertain, have fun, doesn't mean that that I still want to fight. I mean, I still want to fight, I mean, far as for 12 rounds. I think we got a six round exhibition and it's going, I think it's going to be very entertaining for the people. And I think the people is going to love it. Yeah. So if I were you, yeah, I'd do the same. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> the same because yeah. We got to look at between, we got to look at 35 million for 12 rounds and a hundred million for six rounds. Big difference, big difference. And I can't really say exactly what the numbers is going to be, how much money I'm going to make or how much money Logan Paul is going to make. But we talk about projected. We always got to talk about what it's projected to make. Um, and I think that um, just crossing over, I'm the one that started all the, the exhibitions, um, um, me fighting an MMA fighter, it's just me mixing everything together. It, everything started with Floyd Mayweather. So once again, I'm a, uh, I'm the pioneer of do, doing that. Nobody was doing exhibitions before. I mean, they probably were doing exhibitions um, back in the day, but nothing uh, really entertaining. You know, when I did an exhibition in Tokyo, Japan, I think 40,000 people showed up for three rounds. You know, I told the people that I made nine men in nine minutes, but I think actually I made more money than that. I just tell people what I wanted to tell them. Floyd, you seem really comfortable talking about money. A, a lot of people in the UK are not. So what, what are your beliefs around money? Just because I talk about money doesn't make me a bad person. I mean, I, lo I like to have the finer things in life. Money don't make me, I make money. I like to feed my family. You know, um, we, can't feed, we can't feed our family just saying I love you. You know, money is able to put us in a position so we can have the finer things in life. So we are able to travel over to the UK and uh, experience and do different things. We're able to travel to uh, Dubai and other countries and have fun and live life and experience different things. So when, you know, when you're able to make a lot of money, you're able to do those certain things. And for those people that don't have any money, because life is all about having different experiences. And with me being able to make a lot of money, I'm able to take, bring my team as well as my family around the world so they can experience different things. Something you said earlier, Floyd, it really fascinated me. And, and it gave me an insight that um, you really learned about money is you said in real estate, you got to know what to do on a small scale first. Yes. And then you went big. And it, is that because you don't want to take massive risk because you want to be smart with your money? Well, uh, like you don't, go out there and work extremely hard for so many years and then take every every dime you got and just put it put it into something that you don't know about well a lot of people do don't they <laughs> i mean and and, it's, and and majority of the time you get bad results 90 percent of the time you get bad results just like boxing you know we have gotten great we got i i've gotten great results because i took my time so even like my investments, take my time, gradually move slow and, and see how things are going. If things are going great, then we give a little bit more. Then give a little bit more. And that's what I did. Did you ever have any um, sort of strong money lessons as you started making money, whether it was a bad investment or someone turned you over? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I had, um, um, it was, um, a friend of mine or a person I thought was a friend of mine and, uh, they were around me and, um, long time ago. Um, I thought they was in it 
for the well-being of myself. Things didn't go right, um, you know, took a loss. I took a heavy loss, actually. But um, nothing can hold me back. Nothing can hold me back. You know, like I said, I, st- I had to step back, uh, regroup, uh, get a new team, and uh, came back strong. You seem to learn a lot from your lessons, Floyd, and you talk to them like they're just a normal part of the journey. Yes. Do they ever get through? Do they ever hurt? Do you ever beat yourself up for making a mistake or are you just quite sort of strategic and calculated about it? Um, everything happens for a reason. It, it, was, it, was, it was just, I looked at the situation just as a minor setback for a major comeback. I can, I'm, I will always win just in life because I know what I'm doing. And I have so much experience just in life. So I will always win. Nothing is easy. You know, um, that's why I always, you always hear my slogan, hard work and dedication. You know, I believe in working hard and I'm going to dedicate myself to whatever I'm involved in. You got to dedicate yourself. A couple of quick questions and then we're going to move into a quick fire and that'll end us, Floyd. So thank you so far. Um, do you think UFC is kind of, overtaken or outshone boxing and if so do you think boxing can ever fight back and outshine UFC I'm not here to speak bad about nobody's company you know um, to everybody that's involved in boxing as well as MMA sports because UFC is just one company just in MMA sports period you know I take my hat off to everyone in, in both you know it's all about combat sports and pushing yourself uh, to the limit. So I'm proud of Dana White and what he has done with the UFC. And I will always uh, love boxing. You know, we have so many great fighters. We got Mayweather promotions of, as well as PBC. And uh, like I look at the numbers that we did when we joined forces. So uh, me and Dana White will work together in the future. I mean, I'm proud of him and I'm proud of, you know, all other MMA company companies as well as boxing companies. Anthony Joshua or Tyson Fury, who's going to win and why? Very, inter- you know, very interesting fight. I mean, Anthony Joshua has a lot of experience. Uh, Tyson Fury has a lot, you know, as well as a lot of experience. But just, I think, with Anthony Joshua uh, losing a fight, that helped him become stronger, you know. So, um I look forward to working with, you know, Anthony Joshua real soon. We communicate all the time. We talk all the time. And um, I've met Tyson Fury on a few occasions. Uh, great guy. Very uh, interesting. I'd like to see him after the fight. I'd like to see him sing. I seen, I haven't seen him fight a lot of times. I've seen him fight um, probably only tw- – actually, probably only twice. I've only seen Tyson Fury fight twice against uh, Deontay Wilder. Uh, but um, – it's a very intriguing matchup. You know, you can you can never say what's going to happen in the sport of boxing. Both guys are, are great competitors. And, um, you know, like I said, me and Anthony Joshua talk on the regular. So I look forward to working with Anthony Joshua. And if you had to put some of Floyd money, wait, Mayweather's money on the line to make a bet, who would you bet on? Oh, you just asked me that, but you asked me it in a different way, so I already answered that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, quick fire round. I mean, you could... Answer them as quick or as short as you like, of course, Floyd. Um, like I said, I'm my own boss. I'm going to answer how I want to answer it regardless of what you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, which boxer hit the hardest that you ever fought? There's not one particular fighter. Do you make more money if people hate you or if people love you? I'm going to make money regardless. What's the most you ever earned from a fight and which one was it? It could have been, if I'm not mistaken, probably the Pacquiao or the McGregor. Somewhere upwards. 300, 350 million. So they're close. What's the most expensive single item you've ever bought? My Beverly Hills home. Actually, no. It's not It's not the home. It's the IRS. <laughs> Good answer. My, my biggest check is writing, writing to the IRS. <laughs> Making millions or winning world titles, what feels better and why? Together they feel the best. The greatest feeling in the world. If you had to choose between winning world titles but being broke or not winning titles but making billions, which would you choose and why? When I was younger, I would say 
winning world titles. Because remember, we fight so many fights as an amateur for free. Only thing you get is trophies, and you and you cherish those you cherish those trophies. Pretty boy Floyd would say, "Winning titles, money Mayweather would choose the money." And how much money have you made in your career? I don't really know the exact number. You know, some say um, just over a billion. Some say one point one. Some say one point two. But the best thing about my career is um, what I was able to do on the outside, as far as with what I made in the inside. Are you happy? Very happy. I can be happier, but I'm very happy. You can always be happier. Is there anything, if you could go back and do differently, that you would do differently? Just have better relationships with certain people, you know, that I knew in my life. Male friends as well as female friends, um, certain family members, you know, you just want to have better relationships with certain people. And then once you guys are not seeing eye to eye, you guys go your separate ways, even family members. Sometimes everybody feel like you owe them something. And uh, that's okay. I feel like that, you know, when I was in the Golden Gloves and I was a young kid, nobody was supporting. Nobody, I'm not going to say all family members, but only a few family members were supporting me. And, you know, when my dad went to prison, nobody sent my dad any money, no family members. So then when I became champion and I started making tons of money, then it's like, oh, you forgot about us. No, you guys didn't support me when I was young and I was up and coming. You guys didn't see a bigger picture. My dad seen a bigger picture. Um, a few family members seen a bigger picture. And then when everything played out, uh, nobody was there. Best advice you ever remember receiving? From my dad, the less you get hit, the longer you last. So that works inside the ring as well as outside the ring. And worst advice you ever remember receiving? I can't really say right now. That's a question I got to really think about. So I don't want to really rush and go out on a limb and, and say anything and uh, uh, get certain uh, backlash because I don't. I, I can't really say right now. This um, podcast has the word disruptive in it. Uh, so disruptive entrepreneur, disruptor. What does the word disruptive mean to you? And would you say you're a disruptor? I'm just, I'm just going to say I'm a great person. I mean... I love my fans. I love my family. Um, I'm a hard worker, and I just want everybody to tune in to Mayweather versus Logan Paul because I, I always want to stay positive. And Floyd, where should we follow you? What um what channels should we follow you on if we want to watch your fights and anything you might be sharing or promoting? Um, just you know, follow me on social media. Follow my my IG which is Instagram, follow my Facebook, follow my Twitter, and um, just watch me go out and entertain on a regular basis. You know, I appreciate everybody. Floyd, I want to say a massive thank you for doing this. I'm really grateful. Thanks for sharing your time. Tell everybody in the, in the United Kingdom I said hello, and I appreciate them supporting me for so many years. Thank you. Thank you, Floyd. Bye-bye.